Ravens fans have had a lot of debates amongst each other on exactly what the team should do at pick number 14. Uh, and that is because some people feel like they should build up the offensive line with that pick. Other people feel like they should build up the defensive line with that pick. And other people just flat out want somebody that's a playmaker. But no matter what your choice or preference is when it comes to the 14th overall pick, don't forget, Ravens still got like 50 other picks in the draft. But somebody who is a draft expert, I had to bring him on so we could really dive into what the Ravens should do at pick number 14 and, and who would be the best offensive lineman that they could select from. And if they don't go offensive line, then who will be some of their other great options? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from my guy Dominic, and this is a four-part question. He said, what's up, Engraving the Team, Keep It Clean family? Hope everyone is doing well. I just want to say in advance, this may be a little long. So I have been thinking about what is the best route the Ravens should be taking heading into the draft. There are a couple routes that they could take, but the Ravens must get out of their comfort zone. The routes they could take are, number one, addressing the offensive line with Trevor Penning, or Charles Cross. They are both in the top five at their position in the draft, and they both have great size. It addresses a need on the offensive line, especially with the unknowns that we have on that line. So when it comes to Trevor Penning and Charles Cross, and these are two names that have been coming up a lot, uh, especially amongst the Ravens, more so Trevor Penning more than Charles Cross. But how do you feel each of those guys could fit into what the Ravens are doing? And if the Ravens did select either one of the two, um, do you think it would be a good move or a good choice? Yeah, so for me, the guys are a little bit different. Um, I have Charles Cross ranked um, higher than, than Trevor Penning. T to me, Cross is borderline top two tackle. Some people Ooh. have him at one overall. Some people have him at three. Um, it just depends on, on the flavor you're looking for, but... I just really like his game. He's extremely athletic, um, tested very well. Uh, but if you go to his tape, this this is a guy that really knows how to pass block. And that was a big part of their offense. They were um, airing it out a ton. So he's already NFL ready as a pass blocker. And he's not bad in run blocking a lot, like a lot of people um, kind of assume. Uh he, he's very solid there, and I think he's growing because he's working with uh, Duke Mannyweather, a, a great offensive line coach. Um, so I'm very excited at the idea of getting Charles Cross in here. He could start if Ronnie Stanley is still not healthy at the left side, and I, I think the transi transition to the right tackle would also be uh, pretty simple for him. He, he has all the movement skills. It would just take some time. Um Trevor Penning, on the other hand, is a good player. He plays with a nasty streak. Um, sometimes it's a little bit after the whistle. Mm. Uh, that's fine. I, I think he would be a loved player, loved character in Baltimore. His talent just isn't the same level for me. Uh, he gets knocked back from bull rushers, you know, in his FCS competition or um, – he he does have strength and he's very athletic he can move but i don't mm. think he's figured out how to harness that and, mm. and he's not quite the technician that you would like at 14 overall if you move back i could definitely see it as a fit but charles cross is somebody that you would have to pick at 14 if he somehow fell that far mm. okay all right. i appreciate that breakdown now uh part two grabbing another cornerback either Derek stingley jr or Ahmad Sauce Gardner. If they go this route, it all depends on if Tavon Young, well, we saw how that happen, and Anthony Averett leave, and we don't pick up a J.C. Jackson in free ages. <laughs> Ooh, I would love that, but I just, I don't see it happening. But anyway, he said, uh, we saw how every year, no matter how much we don't want it to happen, the cornerback room always goes down, and having quality depth is never a bad thing. This also gives you different ways to use your cornerbacks on defense. So, if you had to choose between one of the two, Derek Stingley Jr. or Sauce Gardner, what will it be and why? Man, that, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a really tough one. Oh, good. 
Mm. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I oh, think I Sting, Stingley has the higher upside. Oh. Stingley has the higher upside. The problem is his injury. Mm-hmm. His injury history is is a little bit rough. 2020 and 2021, he was never fully healthy. And mm. his most recent injury, I believe, is a Liz Frank. Uh, that is really tough on speed athletes. So like Hollywood Brown, similar mm-hmm. thing. He had screws in his foot. You know, Derek Stingley ran 4-3 in high school, which is ridiculous in, in his 40. Um, most high school athletes improve their speed, obviously, as, as they get into college and afterwards. So mm-hmm. you know he's an athlete. Um, the ball skills are 100% there, and I think his versatility – gives gives him the edge over sauce gardner i think stingley can play in the slot a little bit more um and move around formation maybe follow guys sauce is athletic and he's long he's he's kind of what we like in baltimore um physical corner kind of jimmy smith marlon humphrey maybe he he has shades of marcus peters in his game um but just he's more he's more uh jimmy and and uh Marlin for me than um, mm-hmm. than Marcus, but um, it, it's really tough. I I think Sauce is like your your bump and run physical press man corner, and I think Stingley is a do it all corner. Oh, okay. All right, I appreciate that. So part three is that draft a pass rusher on the outside to pair with someone we could get on the interior via free agency. Now, I would like to bring Jonathan Allen over from Washington. I think he is a great young interior pass rusher and a run stopper. Now, drafting someone like George Karloftis or Jermaine Johnson to pair with OA and Allen, if we were to get him, would be scary. So this is going off uh, based off if the Ravens did get somebody like a Jonathan Allen. Um, So George Karloftis, Jermaine Johnson, how would they fit in with the Ravens? Uh, either of those guys would be exciting. Uh, right now, I will tell you, Jermaine Johnson's higher on my board. Uh, I just, I love the player. He obviously uh, was at UGA prior to going to FSU. So um, <laughs> go dogs there. He he developed and really took steps forward as a pass rusher. And I think his game is extremely complete. Um, yeah. He's very strong against the run. He has multiple pass rush plans. Uh, he can bull rush. He can speed rush. He can dip and rip. Um, he, he's kind of got it all, the, the whole package. So he, since he's the higher rated player, I would take him over George Karloftis. But Karloftis perhaps has the ceiling of an Eric Kendricks. Or I, I might have yeah. said the, the name wrong. Um, Who played for no. the Vikings? No, 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 my bad. I, I'm thinking of... Uh, Hendrickson on the Cincinnati oh. Bengals, the edge oh, Trey rusher, Hendrickson. Trey Hendrickson. Uh, I don't know how I did that, but That's all um, good. yeah. So more of a a power powerful edge rusher that uh, kind of surprises people. Um, I think he would be a good player, but as far as I can tell, he's falling in mocks and he's falling in the perception of of fans and people around the league. So. I would be happy with him, but more so in a trade down. Mm. Uh, and he could have a very solid career. I'm not sure that his ceiling is as high as a Jermaine Johnson. Okay. All right. And then the last part, draft the game-changing wide receiver. Uh, but they have to be game-changing. Like, teams will have to respect him when he gets out there on that field. Uh, we see the route that the Bengals took with Jamar Chase, and I wonder will teams try to copy that. Now, if the Ravens were to do that, you would have Bateman, Andrews, Brown, and a player to draft like Drake London, who's 6'5", Jamison Williams, who's coming off the torn ACL, who was the best wide receiver in college this season, or Chris Olave, who has been a stud at Ohio State and is also six foot one. Adding one of these players would make teams look at us differently, but we also have to use them to their strengths as well. So something that I've been saying that I think the Ravens are going to do is take a wide receiver in one of the first three rounds. And I still believe it. I believed it for a while now, and I'm still running with that. Um, But out of these guys, Drake London, Jamison Williams, Chris Alave, 
who would be the best fit for Baltimore if they went that route? They're all exciting players. Uh, I would say Drake London is the best fit. <laughs> Jake. A lot, a lot of people in the Ravens community, as far as I can tell, want a big X wide receiver. I think Bateman can play the X just fine. I think he can be the number one wide receiver for the Ravens as well. But if you're adding a guy to the room, the different skill set is important. Uh, a lot of guys, Daniel Jeremiah being one of them, likes to talk about a wide receiver room kind of like a basketball team. You have, you have the five different spots, and if you fill out your, your receiving core that way, uh, it can do wonders for matchups. So mm. if you have a Drake London, this big skyscraper out there, it kind of give you, gives you shades of T. Higgins and what the Cincinnati Bengals have. Um, okay. So I really like the idea in, in that way for London. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about the other guys as well. Um, Jamison Williams was probably wide receiver one for me, just in terms of where I expect the league to, to pick, uh, before his injury, he is the most explosive athlete in this draft at wide receiver. Wow. He he's a game changer, uh, a yak machine yards after the catch. Um, he's not the same kind of player as Debo Samuel, uh, but he's faster. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, he he's very exciting. I I would be very much in on him if we knew Hollywood's future was not looking great. So like it's kind of a replacement. Bring him in, have both of them for a little while, and then if Hollywood has to go, you at least you have Jamison Williams. Uh, so he has that speed element. I, I I love the fit there. And then Chris Olave is also a fast receiver. He he ran very well. He's a little bit. Uh, more of a vertical threat um, than he is, you know, in every level of the of the field type wide receiver at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think he does have a, a big route tree in his game already. Um, last year, there were comparisons between Chris Olave and Rashad Bateman. So maybe oh. they're a tiny bit synonymous, uh, which is why he would probably probably for me be lower than than the other two. Mm -hmm. But I do like his game a lot, and I think he would be uh, a, a perfectly good fit in Baltimore. It'd just be right. maybe a little similar to Rashad. Next question came from my boy, Sean. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the family. And the dog, too. Appreciate that. He said, I'm going to keep this short and sweet this time. My opinion on the Lamar Jackson contract is that he is holding out to see how and what the Ravens do to rebuild the offensive line to see what he has to play with in the next five years. Is Ronnie Stanley healthy? How about uh, Jawan James? Do we draft the wrestler guy from Wisconsin? Uh, one of the best big men on the Ravens ever was Kelly Gregg, and he was undersized, but a couple of times he was a state champion uh, from New Jersey. Ray Lewis was also undersized, but he was a state wrestling champion from Miami. And so is this guy from Wisconsin, the center, and we are losing Bradley Bozeman. I truly believe that Lamar is trying to gauge how – well uh he's protected in the upcoming years versus when he signs the contract yeah you got me some targets good yeah we got running backs good but what about this offensive line it cannot be the pass where i want to pass the ball but i have to continue to scramble when i don't want to because of the lack of quality of protection tell me what you think about that and if you in his shoes wouldn't you feel the same about your future because your whole career you have not been called a quarterback but in your heart you know you're a quarterback you have the good work and i continue to watch and support Love what you do, brother. One love. Ooh, appreciate that, man. Um, so, Jake, why do you think? What do you think the reason is that Lamar Jackson hasn't signed his deal yet? It could be a number of things. Um, I think he is a little bit one track mind uh, type player. He, since he's been in Baltimore, he wants to win a Super Bowl. That's mm -hmm. all he talks about. That's all him and Hollywood talk about. And if that's his main motivation, then he's going to be more focused on that than, than getting a deal done, uh, which could be part of it. Uh, another side to it, he was recently on uh, the shop with, mm -hmm. with LeBron James and, and many other people, and he was talking to them. He has goals to be a champion, like I mentioned, and he also wants to be a billionaire. Um, at, at some point. So like th through the end of his, his life, he wants to be a billionaire. You know, 
he could he could try to get a nice deal right now, or he could still wait this thing out, let other quarterbacks mm-hmm. like Kyler Murray sign. Um, we'll figure out if the Aaron Rodgers deal is official. I, I think Aaron Rodgers actually commented on Twitter that mm-hmm. um, it wasn't actually what they said. So we'll right. see. Um, he could just be waiting. Uh, he's happy because this year he'll be making much more money than he's ever made uh, mm-hmm. in the 20 millions uh, for this fifth year option. And then there's still franchise tag and uh-huh. there's the Super Bowl. So if he wins the Super Bowl, he's going to be able to ask anything he wants, really. I mean, look at what Steve Bashotti gave to Joe Flacco all the way back after the, the 2012 season in the 2013 year. He got that huge deal at the time. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's very layered, but Lamar wants to win. I think he's going to be a Raven for a long time. The team wants him, and it's just a lot of different things that, that go into it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, something that you mentioned when you brought up uh, Joe Flacco. Um, yeah, there was no way Bashadi could turn him down. He, mm-hmm. you, you can't say no to that. Like, he literally just won the Super Bowl. Um, and I'm sure Bashadi was probably thinking, like, man, we, we should have had this guy signed uh, last year, but they just couldn't get it done. But I'm sure he didn't regret uh, getting another Super Bowl and just having to cough up some extra cash. So, yeah, Lamar goes out there and wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, Bashadi, they they can't tell him no uh, for anything. But I, I do think, yeah, it's a mix of things. Uh, I really do think he wants to see how this team builds around him, what they put in front of him, uh, and not just at – uh, at offensive line, just really how they construct this roster as a whole. Can they build a, a quality roster again? Because they, they did a pretty good job overall last year. Uh, but of course, mm-hmm. injuries ended up taking over. Um, and I think he just really wants to see how that, that market is reset um, because he, again, you brought it up, the, the fifth year option. He, he's making a little over 23 mil this year and it's all guaranteed. The worst case scenario, not even necessarily for him, but for the Ravens, is even next year, they put the franchise tag on him. He will still get a boatload of cash, and it'll literally all be guaranteed 100%. Now, the the backside of that is that it's only a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's no long-term guarantee. Uh, but in the here, the now, uh, well, when that time comes, if that time comes, then it will be fully guaranteed. So he would get all of his money. And then worst case scenario, again, if they do franchise tag him for two years in a row, then he will get that much more uh, guaranteed money. Um, so this thing, I, I, I don't think he signs this offseason. Um, but I, I think this thing is going gonna, is, is gonna to go down a little road. But I'm going to be um, I'm very interested to see what route Lamar takes, what route the Ravens take. Um, and this should be like it always is every single year. Fun offseason. Uh, next question came from my guy, Antonio. He said, yo, Engraven, how's it going, man? Much love to you and the fam again from Be More Holly. Uh, it's been a minute since I wrote and I wanted to get straight to the point. Should the Ravens go bold and double dip on defense in the first round by drafting Sauce Gardner with the 14th pick and trading up again for Jordan Davis with the 16th pick? With the Eagles giving them our second round pick, our early third, and uh, the last two fourth round picks. Getting these guys would mean the world to me, seeing them in a Ravens uniform. Yeah, I know we need an offensive line around Lamar, but I honestly feel like we can do that in free agency. I just feel as though we can get through uh, next season so much better if we address the draft and free agency this way. Uh, Bring in the center, Ryan Jensen, and uh, linebacker Zadarius Smith with Honey Badger as a free safety. OMG, we beat 2022 Super Bowl chance, man. LOL. Oh, that's some aggression right there. That's very um, aggressive. <laughs> if Ravens did that, like, because I know, um, I know a lot of Ravens fans are, can be kind of torn uh, on this issue, um, especially because I know so many people they they focus on the first round pick. And that's it. They focus on the first round of the draft, and that's it. So a lot of people feel like, all right, if they don't address offensive line in the first round, then they're not providing for Lamar Jackson. Um, and I can understand the argument in a way. I know first round, those are usually the, the highest quality players. Those are the best of the best. Um, and, and, well, not always necessarily because you, you can have some gems and whatnot, some hidden guys, some guys that just break out and they take over. 
Um, so the first round is not the end all be all, but I feel like as far as offensive line, it's not, it doesn't have to only be determined through the draft. We do have free agency that's coming up uh, and the Ravens could address it there. They, they have a lot of options and guys are being cut now, like left and right. Uh, you got guys on the trade block. Um, so you, you have some different things that you could do with the offensive line as far as really upgrading it. And, and of course you, you hope you really hope that this is the year that Ronnie Stanley, he got his ankle fully cleaned up and he'll be good to go. There won't be any setbacks. There won't be any injury issues, but you just never know. You hope with Jawan James that if they do end up keeping him, cause I know they could save a little bit of cap space if they released him, but if they do end up keeping him, you hope that he can contribute as well. Um, but you can't bank on those guys. So Ravens uh, in free agency, they could get some stuff done. Now, um, when I first listened to this this trade, uh, this this trade up, so taking Sauce with the 14th pick and then trading up for Jordan Davis with the 16th pick, I was thinking, all right, he probably going to say give him like a 2023 20, first round or something. But he said, nope, no first round is included. He said, give them our second round pick and our early third round pick and our last two fourth round picks. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Not one bit. But what what about you, Jake? How do how you feel about if the Ravens were to make this move? So drafting Sauce with the 14th pick, then trading back into the first round and taking Jordan Davis and addressing offensive line and free agency. I, I'm here for it. Uh, I was kind of <laughs> surprised just like you uh, with the, the compensation that the Ravens would have to uh, shell out there. Um, just second, third, fourth round picks to get back into the middle of the first round, I was like, all right, if the JJ chart says it, <laughs> I, I'm going with it because this is aggressive, but those are two players I love in this draft. So mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Uh, a more likely move in my opinion would be trading it to the back end of the first round mm -hmm. um, rather than all the way, you know, pretty much right after the Ravens had picked. Right. Uh, but both of the players, I mean, I'm not arguing that. All right, next question came from my guy, Zach. He said, hey, Graven, what are your thoughts on trading up in the draft to the top three pick? Ooh, to pick Evan Neal. The man is a beast. This would likely mean parting with our 14th overall pick and then some, but with the Bama connection and the serious needed offensive line, Neal would be an immediate impact player for the short term and the long term. I know O-line is going to be a focus with the draft, so why not go all in on the best lineman in the class? He's even an insurance policy for Ronnie Stanley if he isn't ready to go. And without a doubt, is a future all pro. Thanks for sharing positivity and good vibes in your streams and go Ravens. So we talked about some different aggressive moves uh, throughout this video, but this is probably the uh, the most aggressive one. Um, trading up to the top three and getting Evan Neal. <laughs> How would you feel if the Ravens did that? Yeah. Um Ooh. I, I would love for the Ravens to move up a little bit to get one of the top three offensive linemen, but three mm. is a little rich for me. I think it would cost a, you know, a very good amount for the Ravens to have to do that. Mm. Uh, Evan Neal also is not my highest rated offensive tackle. You oh. know, it, it, it varies for some people. I love Iki Aquanu uh, oh, out of NC State. He is he's my kind of offensive lineman, just pancakes guys left and right. He's nasty, but he does it in a controlled way uh, on a down to down basis. Um, Trevor Penning, like I said, sometimes he plays uh, not just through the whistle. He plays after the whistle. Um, just try to get guys mad. I think Aquano is just a different kind of animal out there. So he would be my trade up target. If, if the Ravens wanted to do that. I'd also be happy with Cross. Um, Neil, sure. Three is too rich for me. Shout out to Graven.